Remember the good old days when kids didn't stare at their phones at the breakfast table? They stared at the back of cereal boxes. I have cereal. More cereal? Uh, cereal. Well, all that time developing prediabetes is about to pay off. Or is it? <laughs> Greetings, hustlers. Are you ready for a deep dive in the sordid underbelly of breakfast cereal? As always, we'll give you 20 multiple choice questions. You ready? Let's dig in, tiger. Question one. Lucky Charms was introduced in 1964. What's the only original marshmallow shape you'll find in a box today? By the way, the pink hearts and other marshmallow pieces are actually called marbits by General Mills, probably because they're not grown on real marshmallow trees. Question 2. Which of these is an actual high-fiber cereal you can buy? Better call the plumber because the original flavor of Poop Like a Champion cereal contains 84% of your fiber for the entire day. Question 3. What is the favorite breakfast cereal of the mischievous character Calvin from the comic strip Calvin and Hobbes? In one comic strip, Calvin declared that chocolate frosted sugar bombs were free of even a single natural ingredient. Pass the spoon! Question 4. Which popular cereal brand actually offered an atomic bomb shaped ring as part of its box top promotions in 1947? Kix proudly advertised that its rings even included radioactive material inside, and we thought our parents' smoking was our biggest health danger as a kid. <laughs> Question 5. What is the name of the cereal that was introduced as a tie-in to the cartoon series The Simpsons? In one episode, Bart gets appendicitis after eating a bowl of crusty O's. Mom! We need to throw out all this crusty cereal! <laughs> Question 6. Which iconic Motown group released a record that you could cut off the back of post cereal boxes? The Jackson 5 record included five songs, and the sound quality for the cardboard record was surprisingly crappy. Question 7. In what year did Wheaties give away license plates, quote, from all 48 states? If you said anything other than 1954, I'm going to need you to stop right now and find a U.S. history video to watch. <laughs> Question 8. What's the name of the bee mascot for Honey Nut Cheerios? Did they pay some ad company millions to come up with the name? <laughs> nope. It was a fifth grader from Texas. <laughs> Question 9. Which company released a limited edition cereal featuring tiny waffle-shaped pieces? It's Ego. But how good would a Waffle House cereal be at 3 in the morning? Mmm, waffly goodness with a hint of vodka and desperation. Mmm, you look Waffle House handsome. <laughs> Question 10. Before receiving a patent for cornflakes, what kind of business did John Harvey Kellogg operate? One of his patients at the spa, Charles W. Post, was later accused of stealing Kellogg's recipes for his own cereal company. We're halfway there. How you doing so far? Oh, well, maybe an oatmeal quiz is more your speed. <laughs> Down to the last 10 questions. Think of them as a delicious sugary sludge at the bottom of the bowl. Question 11. What is the best-selling cereal of all time? General Mills brags that the city of Buffalo, New York, where they manufacture the cereal, smells just like Cheerios. Hmm. Yay? Question 12. In 1975, Lucky the Leprechaun briefly lost his job as the Lucky Charms mascot. What was the name of his replacement? Hey, it was the 70s. Times were tough. Don't worry. Everyone hated Waldo, and Lucky was rehired after less than a year. 
Question 13. According to a recent survey, the people in what percentage of American households eat cereal regularly? Just 12%, but that number did rise during the pandemic when we were all sitting around in our jammies. Question 14. Which best-selling cereal concept came from a winner of a Give Us Your Best Idea for a Cereal Radio Contest? By the way, the child won a set of Hot Wheels toys. General Mills got a billion-dollar idea. Seems fair. Question 15. General Mills has a line of monster-themed cereals led by Count Chocula. Which of these characters is not among the six brands? It's Creepy Caramel. Quentin Tarantino was apparently a Fruit Brute fan. The cereal makes a cameo in Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction. Yummy. Question 16. In February 1972, one of the monster cereals included an indigestible pigment that caused children's feces to become pink. Can you name it? It was sometimes called Frankenberry stool. Yum. The recipe was quickly reformulated to remove this pigment. Question 17. In 2021, General Mills introduced a version of a best-selling cereal as a tie-in to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. What was it called? Loki Charms was a big hit, but you know Fantastic Four Flakes would have been far better than any Fantastic Four movie ever made. He's not wrong. <laughs> Question 18. Who first provided the voice for Toucan Sam, the mascot for Fruit Loops? It was Mel Blanc, but can you imagine Orson Welles as a talking bird selling cereal to kids? It would have been genius. <laughs> Question 19. The so-called Cereal City, where both Kellogg and Post were founded, is located in which U.S. state? Battle Creek, Michigan may be called Cereal City, but Kellogg is not the city's largest employer. But Auto Parts Manufacturer City doesn't really roll off the tongue. In 2024, the CEO of which cereal company drew criticism for suggesting consumers fight rising food prices by eating cereal for dinner? Kellogg's advertising pitch was, quote, give chicken the night off. The moral of the story, kids, never take marketing advice from Marie Antoinette. There you have it, 20 delicious questions about breakfast cereal. Congratulations, we're sending you a free Frankenberry stool trophy. Uh, please allow six to eight weeks for delivery. And if you're still feeling that sugary high, be sure to check out one of our other trivia videos. And show your dad you're great, no matter what he really thinks. See you next time on Trivia Hustlers.